Hey guys, welcome to Courageous Week 3. Wasn't last week so good with Susan's teaching on Renewed Mind? Renewed Mind is so amazing and it does. It can work like in an instant. I've seen this over and over in my life where maybe even throughout the day I'll notice it where there are times that my brain is is focused on circumstances, doubt, worry, fear. And the moment that I switch it to God and seeing how big God is and his love for me and what does the word of God say, I just, I feel light. It feels peaceful. It feels like walking on clouds and uh, it's amazing. It's so good that I wanted to continue on this topic because it's got such a big impact and it so ties in with our theme verse in Joshua where it talks about being strong and have a good courage for the Lord your God is with you. And it talks about meditating on the word of God day and night. And when we do it, that we'll be prosperous and successful in all things. So it is worth talking about the renewed mind a bit, huh? Hopefully you guys experienced some of it. Did you try it last week? Was it just yummy, right? God's word, put it in your head. It's like yum, yum, yum. It's amazing. So if you taste it a little bit, just think the more you do this, the lighter things get, no matter what you're facing. So today, in the context of all of that, I wanted to take you to kind of the background of the story of Joshua in that verse that is our theme verse, because basically one of the things that Joshua is so famous for is that he took the children of Israel into the promised land. So we're going to go back to the story. It's a famous story. Most of you guys have seen so many movies, right, about Moses the Ten Commandments, right? So we're going to go back to that story, to the original promise that God made to the children of Israel. They were enslaved. And as you saw the movies they to Egypt, that they were slaves. Slaves, I can't even imagine, you know, what that would be like slavery that was so intense and so brutal that they're told to make bricks and then make more bricks without straw even. And so God saw, we're going to see where God saw their pain and wants to help because no matter what, whether you are literally stuck or in opposition, or it is just mentally stuck and being in a prison, God cares about your pain and wants to help. And that's what we're going to start off with in, go to Exodus chapter three. It is at the beginning of your Bible, the second book of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Chapter three, we will read, oops, the promise, Exodus three, and in verse seven, it says, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who were in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey. I want to say, God loves you too. And whatever it is, whatever pain that you might be in or oppression or any of those things, God, the sorrow, the sadness, anything that you might be dealing with that is a prison and that is keeping you captive or keeping you stuck, God loves you and cares and wants to bring you out of that to a land of milk and honey. Now, this was a literal land where, but figuratively about milk and honey, because milk and honey represented sweet, fabulous life, yummy things that they didn't have to work for milk and honey. And so we're going, this is the heart of God then, and this is still the heart of God for you today. So just think about it. Any places in your life that you are feeling captive, maybe by situations you're in, circumstances you're in, or even mentally captive, because we can see what's possible by renewing our minds to God's word, that there is freedom. Uh, let's continue in, uh, Exodus chapter 12. You guys know the story. So God, you know, sends Moses to them, right? And they, there were the plagues. And finally, the last of the plagues, uh, was the Passover where God told them to, uh, to 
have a Passover lamb to be sacrificed and put the blood over the door and that the angel of death, the destroyer would pass over them and that the Passover lamb represents Christ and that through Christ and his blood and his sacrifice that we also can be set free and have freedom and have the angel of death, the destroyer pass over us. And so here we go in Exodus 12 and in verse uh, 50, we read, Thus, all the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. They had done the Passover, so they did. And it came to pass on that very same day that the Lord brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, that they were set free after hundreds of years. Why? Because they did what the Lord commanded. Remember, the scripture in Joshua talked about speaking God's word. It talked about thinking God's word, renewed mind, and doing the word. When we think, speak, and do God's word, then we are prosperous and successful in everything that we do. And so they did what God told them, and they were free after hundreds of years of slavery. And then let's keep reading. It says, God took such good care of them. This is just how good our God is in Exodus 13. Uh, and in verse 21, it says, this is just, ugh, just a little bit example of God's goodness. Cause God, when he blesses us, it's like above and beyond Ephesians talks about God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And that's what he did for them in Exodus 12 and verse 50. It says, thus all the children, oh no, no, sorry. Exodus 13 verse 21, it says, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and at night a pillar of fire to give them light, as so to go by day and night. God took such good care of them. Like, this is how big our God is. He cares about the little things. It even says he cares about the hairs on your head. So even small things in your life, God cares about. So here they are. You'd think, hey, I'm just thrilled not to be a slave anymore and to go to freedom. God so spoiled them that by day he had a pillar of a cloud, keep them shade from the sun. And then at night, a pillar of fire so that they could see and stay warm. Oh my goodness, how good is our God? And it just continues in this of God keeps providing for them. He gives them quail. He gives them manna. There's just like God is taking care of them over and over and over again. So they're on their way here, but... All kinds of things happen in life, right? And so in Exodus, we're going to go to chapter 14. There's all kinds. Of, I'm just going to hit uh, a, few, a few of the of the exciting moments in here. But in Exodus 14, what happens is Pharaoh, because people have free will. So this is why sometimes people do really hurtful things and we're not. There is no such life that we can avoid having challenges, right? Nobody has had that yet. And it's not going to stop because the world is full of, you know, people that do mean things and hurtful things and, and what have you and challenging circumstances. Uh, so Pharaoh changes his mind after he lets them go. And so the Egyptian army with all of their chariots are following them. And in, uh, Exodus 14 and verse 10, it says, then Pharaoh, when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were, what? Very afraid. Not so courageous, right? They were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And in verse 11, it says, Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would not, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Oh my goodness. Do they seem a little drama queen-like? A little bit like, oh my goodness, no, wait a minute. Nothing's happened yet. Pharaoh is just chasing them. He is following them into the wilderness. And here they are. And this is what happens a lot of times when we're facing hard things, right? And, and they say, for one, they're afraid. That's not courageous. That's not renewed nine. It's not believing the promise that God said, right? God said he's 
giving them, he's taking them into a promised land of milk and honey. He's got these great things. And so not, they're not dead. They're not hurt. No, they're just fine. And they're sitting there saying, we would rather have served. They even change it. Like they weren't just serving the Egyptians. They were slaves of the Egyptians, kind of a little bit different the, in, in even the way that they're, that they're relating. And I know a lot of times when God has brought us out of hard things, I think about, um, you know, I came out of uh, an abusive relationship years ago that was really hard. And it was hard for me to leave that because it's what's comfortable and what I knew, right? And sometimes we're in places where we just are minimizing how bad things are. We're acting like it's not as hurtful as it is. And so they were doing that because they were afraid and they weren't looking to, God had bigger. He had a promised land with milk and honey. And they're saying, oh my gosh, this is looking a little bit scary. I want to go back to uh, what is comfortable, even though it was very, very hurtful kind of a thing. Um, again, big difference when we're looking to God or we are looking at the circumstances. We get to choose, right? Are we going to believe God's word or are we going to be controlled by circumstances? So then in verse 13, it says, And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Verse 14, the Lord will fight for you and he will hold your peace. The Lord will fight for you. God is not asking you to ever do it alone. We can look at life and the challenges we face with just our flesh. The Bible talks about it being carnally minded where we're just trusting in us and our own limitations and our own weaknesses or spiritually minded, which is life and peace. We can look at circumstances, uh-oh, they're chasing me, or God, which says, the Lord will fight for you. Renewed mind, renewed mind. So here comes, again, another amazing thing that God does in this, um, and that is in verse 21. It says, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind with all that uh, wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine seeing this? We've seen it in the movies. And I, even back in the day when they had the old school movie with Charlton Heston, any of you guys that watched the really old one, it was, it was super like high tech, you know, kind of a thing back then, but I can't imagine for real what it would be to see an, a, a miracle of God like this. For one, they were brought out of slavery and then they had the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud and then walking through the Red Sea to escape from the Egyptians walking on dry ground. I don't know about you guys, would you ever think if you saw something like that, boy, I would always believe God for the rest of my life, right? You'd kind of think that, but we still have to renew our minds. I have seen some unbelievable miracles and there's still times where I go back and I'm looking at my circumstances and not confessing the word, speaking the word, speaking what God's word says, speaking it, thinking it, doing God's word, prosper and successful. The more we put on, the more we experience freedom. So, in this, like, oh, I, you know, it's funny. Like some of the miracles, I've seen a blind person get healed. I saw a dog who was born crippled get healed in minutes. I saw a friend of mine who had had epilepsy her whole life, which is incurable, in minutes be healed and never have to take medication, never have um, a, another epileptic fit ever again for her whole life. I've seen unbelievable miracles. I've seen bones go back together, what have you. But there's still times, like I say, that that if we look, it just we get to pick where we look, right? We get to look at circumstances or look to God and his word. So here they see this amazing thing. But they also, again, there are times where doubts, fears, and unbelief not renewing our minds, and we don't put on the word. And what happens is Six weeks after they broke free as far as slaves go and the Red Sea parted. In Exodus 16, we're going to see what happens. 
It says in verse 2, Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by, uh, by the pots of meat and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. So this is like six weeks. God's taking care of them in every single way. He winds up giving them quail and manna and all of that. But they keep going back to thinking, like looking at life without God, without having the God of all creation, the God of water, earth, and sky, the God of miracles. And so they go back to worry, doubt, and fear, carnally minded. To be carnally minded, it says, is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Spiritually minded is renewed mind, is thinking God's word. Carnally minded is trusting in our flesh, trusting in ourselves. They're sitting there, and then they have completely twisted reality that they're thinking that slavery was better. And again, they haven't starved yet. God winds up giving them quail and manna and they wind up being taken care of. But what happens in this is that the, the journey from Egypt into the promised land should have taken them a month. It was 300 miles. What happens is because of their fear and because of not looking to God, they wind up wandering in the desert for 40 years, going no place. They stay stuck. And yet they're right there. They're right there on the edge of the promised land, but fear keeps them from entering and enjoying it. And Joshua and Caleb were the only two that believed the promise that God made of giving them the land of milk and honey. So that's why we see our theme verse where God says to Joshua that he should meditate on his word day and night and that he'll be prosperous and successful and to be strong and of a good courage because the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. How sad is it? And this is so much because God for each of us has a promised land, you know, figuratively speaking, of each one of you, of where he'd like to take you in walking with him, where the walk is rich and it's free and it's light. Sometimes people have talked to me where, and I've experienced this myself, and they're like, it's like walking on clouds. I never thought it was possible to experience this kind of joy, to taste his love and his goodness, to do life not alone, but with God in it. It's amazing. And so the promised land, is the possibility and the potential of where God can take you. Sometimes it's healing in relationships. That's what's like that for me, just like Susan's story. It was like that where I wasn't believing God and I was getting in toxic relationships over and over and over again because I wasn't trusting God in this area of my life. I wasn't putting God first. I was trying to make men my God. I was trying to look for a man to rescue me and to be the answer instead of God's word says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And so maybe as far as where God wants to take you and the possibilities is freedom from your insecurities, from your doubts, from the shame, from maybe, maybe having freedom financially to trust him in this part of your life and to believe his word in this. Um, so many things. I've seen people get freed of people pleasing and living in fear of what others thought of them to become their, who they were meant to be. When you start trusting God, it's so wild. Every person I know becomes like more colorful, like more vibrant, more alive, more unique, more the way that God created them to be their one of a kind special selves. So whatever it is, God wants to bring you into a promised land for you. Let's go to Romans 12 and in verse 2. This is um, the verse of scripture of renewed mind. Romans, it's going to be kind of towards the back of your Bible. Uh, when you go hit Matthew, you keep going. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Romans, Acts, Romans. I'm still got a ways to go yet. Uh, Acts like at the very and if you hit Corinthians you went too far which I just did Romans 12 and in verse 2 it says 
and do not be conformed to this world, but in contrast to being conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, man, if we have a choice here. We can either be conformed. Conformed is like molded to the world. The world are some of the ideologies of the world, which we're going to look at some of the contrast where sometimes we're trying to do things and they don't work, right? Like some of, some of the ways that we're approaching our lives, like we'll look at the contrast between kind of worldly wisdom and God's wisdom or conformed is molded. It is, if we are passive, if we're not proactive about our thoughts, if we're not thinking about what we're thinking about and replacing our thoughts with the word of God, we are guaranteed to be conformed to this world. And and so, so many of the thoughts that keep you captive, that keep you down, the thoughts of worthlessness, you know, thoughts of I, I'm always a failure. I'll never be good enough. Nobody will love me. All of these things that we obsess about that um, that just take the life out of us. We will be conformed to this world if we are not transformed by the renewing of our mind. But the good news is we can in a moment, in a moment. I, I'll tell you, even during the day, sometimes uh, like one of my little traps that I get in when I feel you know insecure or feel... Like I'm not doing the the best job or like, oh, <laughs> hey, uh, just had it right before I started teaching. I think I suck at teaching the Bible. It's I don't think it's one of my giftings, but I love God's word so much. And so, man, it was even a challenge where I was having thoughts, right, of just like, oh, my gosh, I, I don't think I'm good enough to do this. I'm not a good speaker, that kind of a thing. Instead, believing God's word, that it's God's word that's life-giving. And in a moment that I change my thoughts to that, I feel peace. I feel joy. It's just like, wow, so exciting, you know? And I feel light and not so worried about making mistakes or, I don't know, uh, it's just, it's amazing. So instead of being conformed, it says be transformed. And the word transformed is the Greek word metamorphosis, metamorpho, which is Transform like a caterpillar to a butterfly by the renewing of our minds that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, it's the more we renew our minds. I feel like a new person. There was a time in my life when I was really, really, like I said, I was making men my God, like before I married my current husband. I was stuck in all of these uh, really not good relationships and that kind of thing. And I was out of control. I was cheating on everybody that I was with because I'm trying to find, get all of my needs met in other people instead of in God. And it's amazing because of renewing my mind to God's word and believing it. I feel like, I feel like God took out my brain and put in a new one that feels awesome. <laughs> Susan talked about, we can build a stronghold of God's word where mostly our default is thinking the word of God instead of the worldly thoughts. So that is what's available in that. Uh, I mentioned this verse before in Romans 8. You can just turn back. Um, it says, for to be carnally minded is death in verse 6. Eight, Romans 8, 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So with that in mind, I just want to show you some examples of thoughts that you can have that are defeating and some of the verses, some of God's word you can put in your head. We're not going to turn to them all. I'm just going to read you sections, but they will be in your notes that you will be sent from the fellowship. Um, so that you could memorize this. This is a part of why in the stretch goal, right? Eating and living God's word, eating it, it's digesting it so that it feeds you. And so it gives you life and energy and all of that and living God's word. Uh, but in that, we even have the little stretch goal of memorizing verses of scripture because that helps you to renew your mind to memorize some of God's word. So maybe you'll even want to pick some of these delicious verses out if you battle with some of these things and memorize them. And if you do that, we will give $50 to a food bank if you memorize four verses of scripture and the Jesus acrostic. So uh, I will read some of these just to give you an idea. For instance, if these are thoughts, carnally minded versus spiritually minded, I'll always fail if you've ever felt that way. Instead, re remembering 
In Romans 8, 37, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, believing that and putting that in our minds. If your thoughts were, if anyone knew me, they wouldn't love me. Instead, replacing it with Romans 8, 31, if God be for me, who can be against me? And there's way more verses. I just pick one for each of these. But I've screwed up so much. How could God be there for me? It says in Romans 8, 32, he who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things that even when we were dead in sins, dead in trespasses and sins that Christ died for us? I'm not good enough. Any of you guys struggled with some of these things? It says in 1 John 3, verses 1 and 2, Beloved, now are, you, are, we, now are we the sons of God. Now, now you are a child of God. You can memorize that. What I'm facing is too big or too hard. In 1 John 4, 4, it says, Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Worldly wisdom, carnally minded is, it's self-care, that it's all about taking care of you. You've got, nobody else is going to take care of you. you got to do it yourself. Instead of 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all my care upon him, for he cares for me. Thinking, oh, this is also religious way of thinking is to be carnally minded. When we think things like, I should pray. You ever think that, like, instead of going, instead of like, like, oh, I should pray. Like, God's not going to like you or something if you don't pray. Instead, I pray to experience God's peace. Philippians 4, 6, where it says, be anxious for nothing. Because prayer gets rid of anxiety, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, make your request made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will fill your hearts and minds. I should go to church. Instead, I fellowship so my joy is full. 1 John 1, 3. I should tithe instead of I choose tithing because I trust in God with my finances. Malachi 3.10. Follow your heart. The world says, Susan talked about that last week, instead of the heart is deceitful, Jeremiah 17, 9. Or instead of following your heart, there's another verse that talks about follow Christ is uh, to be spiritually minded, John 10, 27. I need to be strong or I'm not strong enough. In 2 Corinthians 12, 9, we can change that to his strength is made perfect in my weakness. If we're stuck in shame about things that we've done, patterns that we're still stuck in about addictions, uh, drinking, porn, drugs, I I'm too bad for God to love me. Ephesians 2, 5, we interrupt that with saying, by grace I have been saved through faith and that not of myself, it's a gift of God. And... I'm a, or the opposite of this is, well, I'm a pretty good person. I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Uh, that's carnally minded. Instead, interrupting it, that it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23, or in Ephesians 2, 8, that we're saved by grace and not of works. Uh, worldly wisdom, carnally wisdom is live your truth. Instead, John 17, 17 says, God's word is truth. Seeking relationships or careers first to meet your needs instead of Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. The world wisdom carnally minded says, love yourself first. God's word doesn't say that anywhere. It says that we receive his love, that we receive love. We love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4.19 Carnally minded or religious thinking is God is in control, but God's word says actually the whole world is controlled by the wicked one, by Satan. So all of these things, these are things that we can, you can, where you're going to get this in your notes. You can look down at this and you can see maybe some of these verses you can memorize and put them on as far as renewing your mind goes. Stretch goal for this week is to renew your mind. I know that you've started doing that, but you can keep doing it by putting on some of these, especially if there's certain things here that you've struggled with, 
that there's some verses that you can memorize or read or have in front of you to put on throughout the day to change your thoughts from the defeating ones to replacing them with God's word and that God can be there for you in that. The meditations can help you renew your mind. Just 15 minutes, you listen to the meditations, get on your knees, receive from God. It can help kickstart your day of thinking God's word and putting it on in your mind. So you can try that. That's your stretch goal. And you get to share that in your fellowship as far as how that's going and how you're growing in renewed mind. So just to close out, let's do a little meditation on some of the things that some of the verses. So close your eyes and just relax. You can get on your knees if you'd like, just to enjoy being in the presence of God. If you get on your knees, it can help open your heart up. First, just take in being in the presence of God, the creator of all of life. This invisible spirit being and think about if there's places that you have felt stuck or in captivity by either your circumstances or even mental places, stuck in fear, shaming, self-doubts, resentments. And just take in the words, the Lord will fight for you. God knows your sorrow and knows your pain and wants to take you into his promised land of milk and honey, a place of freedom. And just ask God to show you what he's inviting you into of life with him. images just to consider that possibly that's God speaking to you just to be curious and think about to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace where are the areas of thoughts that have brought you death Places that you can put on God's word that brings life and peace. Maybe the promise of Philippians 4 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. To allow yourself right now to make your request made known to God. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for each and every person that's a part of this series. I know that you have amazing things in store for them, that there's so much that you want 
to lead them into a life that's fuller, that has more purpose, more meaning, more freedom, more peace, more joy. That that's what's possible with you, God. And to help each and every person here when they feel themselves getting fearful or feeling down, that they can look to you and your word. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Amen. Love you guys so much. See you next week. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here to talk about giving, giving to God. You know, God, I think, understood that, that was uh, giving is an issue of the heart. And I just love the fact that God is always fighting for the good in your life, that he fights for the good in your life. And so one of the things that I think is going to be really amazing is learning together how to courageously give as well and be courageous in the area of finances as a whole. So one of the things that God actually talks about is he talks about this idea of a tithe. And it's a, essentially it's giving 10% of what you make to God. And God created this as a way for people to put him first in the area of finances. Because I think just for myself personally, I think sometimes it's easy to just get swept up in just having possessions. But sometimes the possessions can own you and the antidote is really giving to God. And you can grow in this every in every week. And you know, the beauty of this is that God says that you can test him in the area of finances. So try me now in this. And he says that when we tithe, that he pours out a blessing so enormous that there shall not be enough for him to receive it. So there's only an upside. And again, you can grow in this every single week and we make it really easy for you to try that. So if you wanna tithe or even do an offering today, you can give online at searchlightfellowship.org or if you have the mobile app available for in front of you, you can do it under the giving section, under the heart. And if you wanna take it a step further, you can go ahead and automate your giving as well. Give this a shot, guys. This is only an upside, a lot of great things for God, uh, for God to show you. And all it really comes down to is you trying him in this.